And the eventual goal is to be able to embed Inkscape within Emacs, thus giving us Ink Map. Um, that's a work in progress also, but it, uh, you can do things with it. So, um, so um, but I think the, the most interesting kind of thing that will eventually be possible is, uh, let's see here, spider. So you can even do things like, uh, this doesn't look really well right now, but anyway, you can see this is a slider, and uh, you can, uh, one of the things I've been meaning to do is like, uh, control um, a sound engine for perhaps like overtone, that we'll hear, hear another talk about. And you could uh, actually parse the, the list code in uh, your buffer and uh, insert sliders and controllers in directly in your code. Uh, so that will be an um, eventual possibility with this branch, which I think is kind of nice. Um, so. Go back to the a little bit simpler and the button. At the moment, uh, there are two different ways of uh, creating widgets inside the buffer. There's um, hard-coded symbols or buttons and sliders and, and stuff like that. And I also have some code to uh, create the uh, widgets dynamically through a system they have in GNOME that's called uh, GNOME Introspector, GNOME Introspection, which allows you to um, create widgets dynamically. Um, basically what it is, it's um, a foreign function in interface. So uh, there's an implementation of that inside the XWidget branch. So you can create uh, widgets and uh, so on from dynamically from strings. And uh, eventually, the entire branch will use, use uh, this system instead, which will make it kind of smaller and simpler. Yeah, questions so far? At the moment, yes. There's nothing uh, uh, really in principle that ties it. it it to GNOME, but it's a nice widget system. Yeah, but maybe. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, you mean like the... Um, yeah. Applications, yeah. <laughs> so th the, this, this is an example of that. So you have uh, Emacs. This is, in this case, a different uh, application running inside Emacs. Ah, oh, okay. So you can run uh, HTML5 apps within the, the, the WebKit integration. Uh, well. Oh, well, this is uh, slash dot, so it's not the most advanced example, but uh, I can show you something else. Then. Um, so this is Emacs Rock. And um, takes a little while, while to green, I suppose. Uh, well, why not? <laughs> okay, it takes a little while to start up, but uh, here's an Emacs buffer showing uh, a YouTube uh, video. So, um, it works. Actually, it, it usually works very well, um, so it might be... 
I think it, I'm not sure. I think it's an HTML5 video. I, I, I just uh, loaded the Emacs uh, video site, so. I, I usually disable it, but it, when I don't, it works, yeah. Okay, so this wasn't a, uh, um, it was an on-topic video anyway. So, um, it work, works with random YouTube's, YouTube videos anyway. Okay. What is? Oh. Um, it's just a single list call. Uh, okay. Yeah. In this case, it's uh, um, an embedded widget, so it's inside. Uh, but there, 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 there are two views on the same video, so... Uh, basically, uh, basically uh, how does it work? Yeah, uh, it renders to a big buffer and uh, then you... Oh, this is this last home page, and it doesn't roll, uh, run slowly. So, uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, that's a problem. And uh, um, the thing you do is um, you have to limit the size of the enormous buffer. <laughs> Uh, there's an, there's uh, a function that uh, sets the size of the uh, embedded uh, widget, so um, you, you have to use it. And there's some code then to automatically uh, automatically size the widget, so it's a usable size. That's basically how it works. But you can also tell it an explicit size. Yeah. Okay, so if you have a really, really, really uh, large buffer, that's the question. Uh, uh, you have to handle it basically the same way uh, mm -hmm. a normal browser handles it. So uh, in uh, the it, it's not really 100% handled in the current code, but uh, what you need to do is uh, you need to limit the, the, the size. So uh, you need to figure out uh, the largest size you need to render to different window sizes. It, it's a little bit tricky, but it, um, it works for surprisingly large number of use cases. I, I use this, in fact, every day for uh, surfing RSS feeds and stuff like that. It works very well. So uh, it never crashes for the feeds I normally visit. Uh, if I go to, uh, like, uh, a new page where, where I haven't really thought out how to handle that new page, then, then it might crash. But it's um, surprisingly stable. Okay, if anyone, uh, damn, if anyone's got any questions, maybe we can use this so like other people who are listening to the stream can hear. Okay, yeah. Okay, so questions, uh, can I show the live stream? That's uh, really interesting. Uh, sorry, then it...
forwardtechnology.co.uk Sorry, this is too funny to avoid. Uh, like that. And uh, live slash live slash. <coughs> it's an FLV, so it might not work. It might. <laughs> Just open live, I guess. Oh, well, it's uh, interesting. Okay, while well, that uh, load. We can have a look at the code then. Uh, okay, it's here. So there's some uh, oh, there's um, a file for in Josh called xvidget test .pl and it uh, has all these basic uh, demonstrations. So basically, how it works, it's basically the same interface like for uh, opening images in Emacs. I just extended the interface to, to also um, um, allow the use of uh, widgets. No, I'm sorry. Didn't actually work. Ah, no, it was a good idea. Um, okay, so. Uh, yeah, if you know the, the Emacs image interface, then you should be comfortable with the, the um, XWidget interface as well. It's not very complicated. You uh, just um, uh, put the, um, the, the uh, a class of properties on, the, uh, on a, a character, and then you get a widget there instead. So... Um, and of course, in order to be able to handle things like uh, the socket interface, you need uh, a callback interface to properly start the uh, embedded program when the uh, socket is running and stuff like that. So there's of course a number of details, but it's it's not uh, the interface is not very complicated, I think. Yeah, um, I asked the question myself um, <laughs> on the, the develop, development list, and um, the, yeah, it's obvious in retrospect the way you do it in Emacs is with events. So uh, basically, it's uh, just event handling code, like everything else. Yeah. Well, I haven't noticed any problems actually. It works kind of well. You get an event. Yeah, the so question was okay, so Emacs is single threaded, and uh, how does it work talking to a multi threaded uh, widget like uh, WebKit? And uh, in practice, it works kind of well actually because uh, you just get an event when uh, something happens in the embedded instance and uh, Emacs uh, handles the event when it has time. So it works. Yeah. Oh, so, sorry, can you remember? Uh, X is single threaded in any case, so it has to queue events from multiple sources and dispatch them to you. I don't imagine Emacs cares whether, or, or can even tell whether the thing it's embedding is multi-threaded or not. Yeah, so there you have it. Uh, any more questions? My question is, you were talking about a, an eventual possible use case being this, I think you called it Inkmax, where you have Inkscape embedded inside Emacs. Yeah, okay. So I was trying to understand, um, what the difference, well, I mean, I know it's a look, it's a look difference, but what, what's the difference between that and having Inkscape running on one side and Emacs running in a different window? 
and then talking to each other over some socket. Yeah, so that's a, a good question, and that's actually how Ink Max works at the moment. You, uh, I use the the bus interface of uh, Inkscape, and uh, so there's uh, code to um, bind uh, is functions to all the dbus dbus handlers in Inkscape, and then you don't need to use the the menus and stuff, and you can instead use uh, Emacs to uh, access the diff different parts of. The That's really cool. TV. So, why why I'm asking is, in what way would this um, be better? Like, what why would you want to embed Emacs in uh, sorry Inkscape inside your Emacs window frame? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I use Inkscape quite a lot, and uh, for making posters for um, for presentations and things like that. And um, and when you make large technical posters, uh, there there are things that are uh, not really. Sorry, no, that wasn't what I meant. I I can completely understand how it might be useful to have Inkscape running. My question is, why is it important for you to have the Inkscape instance running inside the Emacs? Basically for con convenience, because then, then you can have uh, different parts of the, the poster in, at different, uh, in different Emacs windows, and uh, you can have uh, things like that. Cool. Thanks. Mm. Thank you. So, any more? Three questions, actually. Okay. How do you handle applications that have multiple windows, like GIMP or uh, Inkscape itself? I don't. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Second question: Is there any hope of having that join the main Emacs branch sometime, someday? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Will the fork join? The, the main Emacs on there. Well, I wouldn't call it a fork. It's a it's a branch, and uh, indeed there's hope. Um, but there, uh, yeah, I haven't actually had time to to um, make the patches so beautiful as they need to be to enter um, the main uh, okay. stream. So, um, if anybody has uh, lots of time on their hands, they can. <laughs> I would be happy to accept help. Well, that's actually my third question. Uh, do you have, uh, is this in some GitHub account of uh, Savannah? Where can we find the project itself so we can try to help you? It's uh, beside the other Emacs branches in the, uh, the main uh, Bazaar repository. Okay. So, uh, there's a, a variant on the GitHub, but it's not up to date, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Any more?